In January of 2009, I was sitting with top managers, like now, to discuss their expansion plan. But less than five minutes since the meeting started, and it became apparent that what is on their mind is basically the opposite. How many people to lay off? Let me describe their situation. Their company is producing electronic components that they are selling to companies that produce electronic consumer goods, which are selling to the retail. For years, about seven years, their sales went up year after year by about 5%. But last November, and I'm talking about November of 2008, they still started to drop, and December, it was like a meltdown. Their sales dropped by 50%. Frankly, they were not too surprised because all the newspapers at that time were filled with warning that uh, a very major recession is starting. I think that you all remember that time. And yes, this drop of 50% was not unique to them. All their competitors uh, suffer from approximately the same drop in uh, sales. Of course, it's evident that you cannot maintain all your workforce when uh, the volume that you expect is about half of what they were. But there was a huge debate internally. Some people said, who said that we've seen the end of it? Who said that the sales will not drop even further? Some are claiming, no, it cannot. Some are claiming, the most more optimistic people, that sales will start to go up. So the amount of people that they had to lay off was in a huge debate. Would you reach a different conclusion when sales are dropping so much? As a matter of fact, the thing that prevents them from seeing the obvious and because of it to reach such a devastating decision was the fact that almost all of us tend to think in local terms. A machine, a department, a plant, even a whole company. And we don't think in terms of the system as a whole. Let me explain what I mean. What is the system as a whole? The unit that really interacts with the external world. As we said, they are not interacting with the external world. They are not selling to the external world. They are part of a supply chain. They sell to companies that produce the consumer good. This company sells to retail. The retail sells to the end consumer. So if you really want to make any decision, you have to remember the basic rule. As long as the end consumer did not buy, nobody in the supply chain actually sold. Still, when we are coming to make decisions, we are forgetting it. So, of course, what is the obvious first step? To ask, yes, we understand 50% drop of your sales, but what actually happened to the sale of retail to the consumers. In other words, what happened to the sales of the supply chain? Today, using the internet with the vast amount of data which is stored on it, it's not a big deal to find the answer. So it didn't took long and we found out that in December, the sales to the consumers, for example, in the United States, dropped by only 2%. As a matter of fact, December was a different month than usual because a new phenomenon was there. Almost all the retails of consumer electronic goods in the United States gave hefty reduction in price, not just after Christmas, but throughout December. By the way, 2% drop in sales where the measurement is dollars when the retail gave such hefty reduction in price means that actually the sales in units did not went down. It actually went up during December. But now we are seeing here a dilemma. The supply chain, the retail, sold about the same as December last year. Nevertheless, the orders from the component manufacturing dropped by half. What's happening here? Why does it happen? Well, Presented this way, it's not so difficult to answer. Retail is run by people. These people read newspapers. What did they read in the newspaper? Recession is here. What is the almost instinctive reaction of a retailer 
facing a recession, especially when you're a retailer of electronic consumer goods that you know very well, that since the products themselves are changing every six months or less by better products, if you will hold inventories that you'll get stuck with, you will hold absolute inventories, which means instinctive reaction of a retailer whenever he's afraid that recession is at the door is to get rid of the inventories. What are the two main ways to get rid of the inventories? One is give reduction price, sell them. And that's exactly what they've done. What is the other way? Well, everybody knows it. The other way to reduce inventories is stop purchasing. And that's what they've done as well. Of course, when they've dropped their purchasing, the companies which are producing the electronic systems, the electronic consumer goods, not only have dropped their orders to match the drop in the orders coming from the retail, but also at the same time dropped their inventories. And that's why the drop of orders, the reduction of orders from the component manufacturing was even bigger. As we know, 50%. Now we understand why this happened, even though the sales to the end consumer did not change. But knowing that, we can understand what is waiting during 2009. Because let's face it, the retailers and the OEM, the companies that produce the electronic systems, don't have infinite inventories. Once they are fleshing out the existing inventory, they will have to buy again, to purchase again. Now the question starts to be, okay, how much time it will take them to flush out the inventories? This is also quite easy to find out because there is enough data in the public domain that tells you how much retailers and how much companies that produce electronic consumer goods, how much inventories do they hold. And if you are looking on it, you see that it's about three and a half to four and a half months in total. This means that since already for two months are cleaning the inventories, another two months, another three months at the most, and the consumption and the orders on the electronic manufacturer, on the component manufacturer, will restore to normal. Wait a minute, what is normal? Normal means will be restored back to the consumption of the customers, of the consumers from the retail. How much will it be then? For that, we know also the answer. We know that electronic consumer goods sales are very much in line with the GDP the gross domestic product of the countries. And because of it, what we have to see is what is the forecast for the GDP. Once again, it's available through the internet, no problem. It turns out that the GDP was forecasted to be in some countries dropping by 2% and in some countries still growing by over 5%. Nothing relative to the 50% scare, which means the consumption level in 2009 is expected to be about the same as 2008, which means right now we have the drop. The drop will continue as long as the companies which are further down the line in the supply chain are holding inventories. But when they're flushing it out, the consumption, the orders will come back to normal, which means the latest in April, the consumption will go back to the levels of 2008. Now, with this understanding, which is totally obvious, would you consider to lay off people now in January just to hire them back in March? This is ludicrism. These companies that I was sitting with did not lay off. But for example, their largest direct competitor, a week later, have laid off 35,000 people. Have you noticed? What was blocking them from seeing the obvious is not lack of understanding of cause and effect. Everybody knows what is the reaction of retail to scare or to expectation of recession. Everybody knows that the retail cannot operate without any inventory. All the facts are there, all the knowledge is there, and nevertheless, they've reached the opposite conclusion. The vast majority of these companies did lay off people in January and suffer the consequences. Because, yes, in March, the demand came back, and in April, the demand on the 
electronic component manufacturer was the same as 2008. No wonder. We do not see the obvious because we don't think globally. That's what blocks us.